Scientists in Georgia recently captured something on video that has never been seen before, a fish jumping into a flooded nest to snack on a newly hatched baby bird. In parts of coastal Georgia, seaside sparrows often build their nests in wetter areas because it makes them safer from some types of land predators. But that means their nests run the risk of being flooded. And now, scientists found that a flooded nest is an invitation to a new type of predator, fish. I have video cameras that I placed on seaside sparrow nests to be able to monitor the nest fate, so to see if a nest failed, why did it fail, and then also to help me identify the predators that were finding and eating the nest. And so I got a behind-the-scenes look at anything that happened in the nest, uh, which was sometimes fun and sometimes really hard to watch. A type of fish called a mummichog hopped into a sparrow's flooded nest, where there was one hatchling and two eggs. It ignored the eggs and attacked the baby bird. The defenseless chick didn't have a chance. There were three eggs in the nest, and that day one of the eggs hatched. And so once the, once nighttime came, you had one hatchling and two eggs, and there was a really high, high tide, and the nest flooded. And in, in the nest, the chick actually is floating on top of the water. That's how small it is. It's floating on top of the water, and it's staying alive because its nostrils are above the water. Um, and then all of a sudden, a fish leaps out of the surrounding water and into the nest, and, I mean, literally leaps over the edge of the nest. And it's there for a while, and then all of a sudden you see it look up at the, at the chick and just, I mean, grab it and just ferociously start tearing away at this chick. Um, and of course, the chick dies in the process. The mummy chog is, a, is an extremely hardy fish. So they live in the salt marsh, and they will, like when the tide is low, they'll, they can survive in like little pools of water that don't have a whole lot of oxygen in it. So they can survive like wide ranges of oxygen levels in water. They, survive wide ranges of pH. And so because other killifish have been seen like jumping between puddles of water, this behavior is not surprising to me. And given how hardy they are, I, even further, even more so not surprised. And we're sent to outer space, this species, the mummy chog, you know, some fish and some eggs and to see how they adapted to a weightless environment. And they did just fine. <laughs> they were like hmm. off balance for a couple days and then they were fine. And then with the eggs hatched in outer space, they were completely fine. So like capable of a lot, of surviving a whole lot. We can imagine that even though this is the first time this has been recorded and published in scientific literature, um, I'm sure this is not the first time this has happened. This is not that... Not that species' first rodeo, <laughs> with, with mm -hmm. that, probably. The sea level has risen measurably over the last several years in Georgia, and sea level rise is expected to continue to increase the height of high tide. With high tide increases, we expect to see more instances of nest flooding. So seaside sparrows are actually adapted to deal with nest flooding. Like it's it's a threat that they have a behavioral response to. So if so if a seaside sparrow's offspring die because the nest gets flooded. They'll build a new nest right away, but they'll build it higher off the ground, like a direct response to being flooded. But the problem is that the higher off the ground a seaside sparrow nest exists, the more likely they are to get found by terrestrial predators. But now, not only do they have nest flooding as a threat, you know, because of drowning issues, right, because of the threat of drowning the, the offspring, but there are also aquatic predators that can access the nest when the nest gets flooded. Um, because it is possible, it is possible for a seaside sparrow chicks to survive a nest flooding event. Like I've caught that on camera. They can keep their head above the water, they'll make it. Um, and if they're not, you know, submerged in the water too long, you know, where they lose control of the body temperature, they can survive. But if they are having predators access the nest with the water, so what exactly is going on when it comes to the variation in nest pred predation threats between the different kinds of animals that are finding and eating them in the nest? While this was a sad ending for the bird, for scientists, this is just the beginning of learning how common it is for fish to eat baby birds, and how the threat of an aquatic predator may shape sparrows' choices for where they build their homes.